Welcome back to Feti. I've spoken many times about old traditions surviving in Turkey and the barber shop is no exception. Look for the towels drying outside. Treat yourself to a classic shave, haircut and even get the hairs in your ears singed away with a burning taper. One little town where lots of traditions survive is a little place called Azumla, or Yeshil Azumla as it's called now, up on a high plateau about 20 minutes drive from Fethiye. Azumla means with grapes, and it's one of the only places in the Fethiye region that I know that makes wine. As you wander around the village, they'll try to sell it you in plastic Coke bottles or five litre tins. If you don't fancy the wine, then do pop into the lace cellars. This is Nurten. She's been using this old weaving machine since she was 13 years old. She told me her eyesight's not so good now, but still young at heart and rides around on a quad bike. Lots of nationalities live in this area. Some have restored the original old buildings here and the Azumla festival has also become very popular. And there's quite a few luxury villas on the plateau. One of the best restored buildings is the wine house, which has been here for a few years now. So there's a new place that's opened, well, in the last year or two, called uh, Flora and Fauna, which is a coffee shop. Absolutely amazing place. This uh, place is run by uh, a couple called Jan and Jansu. And um, what they do is they get coffee from all over the world and they buy it fresh and then roast it themselves, which I think is an amazing idea. They used to be translators, apparently, and uh, they restored this beautiful old building and that turned into a most fabulous looking place that's sort of French styled if you like but they've done a really good job. Ah Ferrin. Ah oh, and a damn good cup of coffee. Just a couple of miles from Azumla, up a mountain track, is the ancient ruin of Kavianda. Kavianda is very special in many ways. One is it's at an altitude of over a thousand meters, that's more than 3,000 feet. Similar to being on the top of Mount Snowdon in Wales, or three quarters of the way up Ben Nevis. The ruins are spread out in a pine forest, so mostly in the shade. Combined with its altitude, this makes an ideal ruin to visit in the summertime, when the resort temperatures are in the mid 30s. Up here, it's in the cool 20s. It's very peaceful and quiet up here, apart from the sound of the cicadas and the wind blowing through the pine trees. What a stunning view of Fetia, eh? It's 
Some of these cisterns are really, really deep. And they hold huge amounts of water. But of course, there's no natural spring here in Kodianda, so this is how they stored their water in the Roman period and before. The only other person you're likely to see is the Bekchi. That's the guy who looks after the place. He's the guy you pay your entry fee to. And this is one of the things that always sticks in my mind in Kadianda is this fantastic stonework because if you see how it's been cut and I've done some building myself in my time and I really don't know how the heck I could do that but that is amazing Half an hour's drive out of Fetier, back on the Dalaman Road, and just past Yanakla, there's a little turn off going to a hidden away restaurant and campsite. This is Yeshiluvade, or Green Valley. not easy to find, this natural setting is a little gem, especially on a hot summer's day. The restaurant menu and the facilities are a bit limited, certainly not Michelin star, but it's an amazing setting and camping comes with a little twist. But to sit on a kushk, that's a Turkish wooden platform, and eat trout and salad with this setting is certainly a memorable experience. Some of the islands you visit on the 12 island boat trip out of Fetier are only a stone's throw from the small upmarket resort of Gojek. And some of the boats do the market trip on a Sunday. Alternatively, you can drive there in about half an hour from Fetier town centre. As you can see, Gojek is uh, very popular with the yachting fraternity and uh, there's an awful lot of luxury boats here. A lot of the people come in here for replenishing their supplies and sometimes there's some famous people here too. Uh, Jennifer Lopez has been seen here, uh, Shakira also has been here and uh, Prince Charles has been here more than once one of his favourite places apparently in Turkey. But it is a little bit on the expensive side and uh, they do have a lot of luxury goods here.
There are some lovely hotels, bars and restaurants in this little town. It's well worth a stopover. Let's talk about the weather. It's the middle of September now, nine o'clock in the morning, uh, and it's about 30 degrees. Uh, we've been here since July, and uh, temperatures went up to 37, near on 40 degrees in the daytime, and that's the shade temperature as well. So it gets pretty hot. Uh, living without air conditioning is pretty unbearable. And we tend to, uh, our lifestyle tends to revolve around early morning and uh, evenings. In the daytime we stay in the air conditioning. It hasn't rained here since we come, not one drop of rain in nearly three months. So bear that in mind, the best months definitely for cycling and to come out and just enjoy uh, your holiday is May and September and I think most people would agree with that. The weather does change around middle of October. You can get quite a lot of rain and then um, and then the winter sets in. But the winter here is is mild, it's, it's beautiful actually. Uh, it doesn't rain that much and if it does rain it's beautiful sunshine within the next day or a few hours. <laughs> 